Now let's see this question. Consider the following set of premises. Now two premises are given, two sets of premises are given. And now they are asking us whether it is consistent or not. Now what is the definition of consistency means? Let us say you have premises like this P1, P2, P3, something. Okay. Now we always start with the assumption that all these given premises are true. Okay. Now here you should not have two different premises, you know, two uh, premises which are say which are almost the same but then don't they don't agree with each other right so what i mean to say is if you have one of the premises let us say some q and if you have other premises q then it means that we are trying to say that q is true and also negation q is true if q is true negation q is going to be false isn't it now if you if you are trying to assume that both are true then that is inconsistent right you cannot assume that way either directly if these are given you can say that it is inconsistent or let us say you you have applied some few rules of inference and then you have got a conclusion right now you can also use that conclusion as one of the premise isn't it now from these inferences when you get this uh, from these premises when you get a conclusion using the rules of inference right now let us say you got q here q is not initially given but the negation q is given now these two are not agreeing with each other right then also you can say that it is inconsistent right now let's see this example here now they have given a set of premises let's say s1 which are like this a implies b a implies c b implies negation c and then a so this is given right so now you can just simplify it from these two from these two you can get b right and from these two you are getting negation c right and again using these two this one and this one you can get c now see this we are getting that negation c is true as well as c is true so this cannot be a possible right why only one of them can be true if c is true this is going to be false if this is true this is going to be false right it cannot be the case that both c and negation c both are true right therefore s1 is inconsistent now let's look at s2 now if you look at s2 the premises given are negation a or b negation b and a now from this if you observe it let's say these two right from this you can clearly say that it is negation a is true right disjunctive syllogism now if you observe this this is saying a is true and this is saying negation a is true which cannot be possible right only one of them can be true therefore again it is inconsistent so the answer is both s1 and s2 are inconsistent okay Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old iits so all the iits put together have a acceptance rate of 0.5% and iits universities better than iits they have very good acceptance rate like 30% 40% but all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building 
and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee the amount of uh, fee that you have you have a range of uh, universities you can apply for 10 lakh universities 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities but whatever it is you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you getting it after you get a job and then we do visa assistance mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni so now you might ask why we should join game of visas so the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.